I just don't. But we have no choice for the rest of this year, do we? All righty. Um, so we picked up a tournament trophy yesterday and went undefeated, picking up I think it was our, eighth, our eighth tournament championship in about 10 years. So um, Travis will open up with a statement and we'll open up the questions. And the, am I wrong on this one? Did I hear somebody say it's the 17th? They've offered 20 trophies in Conference USA, 17, yeah. and it's the 17th one that we, that's wild. Um, well, uh, obviously very, very proud of our team um, for going down and finding a way. I said during the tournament publicly one day, and, and it's, uh, it's absolutely what I would say now. Um, you know, I've always said, you know, to be successful this time of year, you got to be good, and we are, and you got to be lucky, and we weren't really. I, you know, I, um, I said in the middle of the tournament. I think I said, uh, I think fate doesn't want us to win this tournament, but our players just don't know that, and they just keep finding a way because we dealt with so much adversity there with Callie's injury and with Kaylee's injury and. Um, you know, we had to overcome a lot to work our way through that tournament. It really put our team to the test. And uh, I'm just really, really proud of the fact that they were able to find a way to win another championship. So questions? This might be a loaded question, but you've had a ton of talented teams over your career. Mm -hmm. How does this team kind of stack up for you mm -hmm. mentally and emotionally? Yeah, the word that just keeps coming into my heart with this team is it is just fulfilled. Like, I, I just really, there's a fulfillment with this team because um, there's so many individuals in this group that had to elevate themselves for us to get to the point that we're at right now. And that is very fulfilling. Um, you know, it wasn't... You know, we weren't led by one or two superstars and everybody else went along for the ride. Um, you know, Paige Briggs is an All-American. That's easy to see when you watch. But it's been the development all over the place of, you know, Kaylee Cox was not part of our program back in January. Those freshman middles weren't even in our program yet in January. And Logan Gravengood made a position change. And, and even down to, look, yesterday was one of the most special moments I've ever had in my coaching career, watching Cam Mosley go back at the end of that match. You have to understand that kid's story. I mean, she's a senior. She's never been in our lineup consistently. Um, and she just, every day she works. Every day she's the kid that's in the gym early. Every day she's like, no matter if she's playing, not playing. And, uh, you know, and here she is. I mean, it's like a Disney movie. She's a kid that, that had, came into the Conference USA tournament and had two aces on the year. And we're down 24-23 in that third set yesterday, and she had aces on back-to-back -back serves. And, you know, flips that, that set and puts it back in our favor that we ultimately win. And uh, that is the perfect exclamation point for this team, because this team is made up of so many kids who, who paid the price, who, who paid the price in every way. They put the work in, uh, they were selfless, they were about our team. It wasn't about how much did I play, it was how we did. And I start every, every single year saying the same thing to our kids in the preseason. We're either all gonna be champions or none of us are. And yesterday we all became champions. Yeah, we, you know, we were up 2-0, and then the third set, they, you know, they fought back their seasons on the line. They were very, very good. And then, you know, it was that another big adversity that we had to face, you know, at the start of that fourth set. Uh, you know, we started, so we have three outside hitters on our roster, Paige Briggs, Kaylee Cox, and, and, um, and you know, we just, and Katie Howard, and we just, I started the match with Katie Howard in a serving role, so we had already used her. And then, you know, it's 6-5, something like that in that set, and Kaylee Cox gets that nosebleed. And so she has to come out of the match. 
well, we don't have another outside hitter that's available to put in because we had already used uh, Katie Howard. And so, you know, we're sitting there, you know, it was almost like the Penn State weekend all over again. And all of a sudden we have to bring a, a middle hitter off the bench. It, it's, like, it's like putting your power forward in at point guard. You know, and so that game, was, so we're stuck in the front row. We can't score, and obviously that game separates big time with Kaylee sitting over here trying to control the nosebleed with, with Izzy, our trainer. And, you know, I'm just like the, the misfortune of a nosebleed right in the middle of a match. And then the double misfortune of it just so happens you had already used your other outside and another role in that game. And, you know, I literally had a moment where I just smiled and I was like, this is, you know, like I said, fate, fate's not in our favor in this deal. And so, you know, UTEP got a lot of uh, courage in that fourth set when they separated when we were stuck. And, you know, before the fifth set, I just had our team, we did not talk about volleyball. We, there was no X and O anything going into that fifth set. I sat them down, I sat in front of them, and I said, look me in the eye, take a deep breath, remember who you are. And let's reset, we're good, let's go. And we played one of the most dominant sets that we've played all season long to get to the championship. No question. We were up 21-17 in that third set, uh, looking to close that thing out. But again, in my mind, I've been doing this long enough to know you don't look like this unless you expect things to probably get rocky for a while. And um, we were up 21-17, and you just knew it would. It, we weren't going to just sail off and finish that thing off. And you know, all of a sudden they come back. New Mexico State's very good, and they came back and. Um, from 21-17 down to 24-22 lead. They were up 24-22 in that third set. But again, that's been the mark of this team. I say it a lot. I'm not going to tell you this is the toughest team I've ever coached because it's not. Um, I wish we had more toughness. But this is a team that has an incredible amount of confidence and trust in each other that they're going to make plays. And at 24-22 down, you know, we side out to get it to 24-23, and in comes Cam Mosley at 24-23 and, and laces two straight aces and flips that game. And next thing you know, we're, we're dogpiling in the middle of the court. And um, it was just such a fitting end to a, to a, uh, a conference season, you know, where everyone played a part. And, you know, there were times when Cam was, we talk about using, going from one end of your roster to the other, and there were times when Cam was at the other end of that roster, but the kid never quit working. It did not matter what the situation was or if she had played in eight matches or whatever, that kid was going to be ready if her moment came. And that's what every coach dreams about kids on their roster being, and that's why we're sitting where we're sitting. With all the conference realignment throughout the season, you said that conference USA this year has been no, it does because you know I said at the beginning of the year I thought this would be a, a better conference USA and it if you watch that tournament it is a better conference USA there's no question about it there were probably there were eight teams there there were six coaches that probably went in that tournament with a very realistic belief that their team could win that thing. And, you know, for us to navigate it, you know, we, we, we did it the hard way, but that just seems to be the, the way we do things. And, um, and so I'm really, really proud in, of this one because, you know, for, for so many years in the recent past, it's, it's honestly, it's been, let's hurry up and get Western Kentucky and Rice to the championship and see who's going to win this thing. And this year, I mean, we were, we were, a few points from being out of the tournament in the semifinals. And uh, it's where this league is going, too. There's a lot of good coaches. Um, there's a lot of good teams. And it will get harder, which also makes me really cherish this one, because I know how hard it's going to get to to continue to do these things. Just looking ahead to the selection show, mm -hmm. kind of a wish list, whether it's 
the brackets? Did you end up in location opponents? Yeah, not not really. I, I, I just my only wish list for this is I don't care where we go. I don't care where we play. I think we've made a hard push to try to host, but I, I don't know if we're going to get there and get that opportunity. And so my only wish on my wish list is that that the committee take a hard look at what we've done and respect us for what we've accomplished. And wherever they need to send us competitively is fine. You know, I don't want to stay close or go to a certain place. I want to be respected at the level with which this team has earned. And uh, I don't know that we're going to be one of the 16 hosts, but we should be one of the seeded teams right underneath that. And obviously, the higher your seed underneath that, the better the matchups are going to look moving forward. And so um, look at our body of work. Look what we've done. Um, we've lost one match at full strength this year one match when we've been healthy and that was in five sets to number nine Arkansas and this team has played an incredible schedule uh, we've stood up to challenge after challenge and so uh, I don't really have a wish list other than that I just want them to be respected for what they did and I'm looking forward to uh, everybody getting together this weekend and, and finding out where we go next and plus with this conference and then No question. I think this is. I think this is a team that people probably don't want to see in their bracket. Um, I think this is a team that can win in in December. And it, again, when you get to the NCAA tournament, everybody can play. It doesn't mean we will, but uh, this is a much more, a much deeper, much more balanced, much more solid team than a lot of the teams that I've taken into it. So. You know, matchups are so critical. It depends on, you know, what kind of teams end up in our bracket and all that. Um, and we'll have to play really well. But, uh, but I like our team, and I think that uh, we'll be a tough out for somebody. You anticipate being a full strength for that? I do. Yeah. Uh, I, you know, Callie Bauer. It's just incredible. I, I, I can't tell you guys the odds against her getting up and playing in the semifinals. She dislocated her shoulder in the first round of the tournament against Jacksonville State um, just in an open air injury like she did I thought she landed on the ground funny or whatever but she was just moving toward a ball that got redirected and she just reaches back pretty violently and and just dislocates her shoulder and she's laying on the ground and it's still dislocated and and so you know the thought of her getting up and playing in the semifinals was absurd to me you know after that happened but um, our trainer uh, Izzy has done such a, a phenomenal job with our team. She always does. And um, to be honest, they had to convince me. I was, look, we were already in the NCAA tournament, right? We were going to get an at-large bid. And so I was ready to just kind of take care of Callie and, and you know, roll with our backup. And, and if it meant we came home, then we get ready for the NCAA tournament. But uh, Callie Bauer was not having that. Um, she, they called me to her hotel room late that evening, and, and it was kind of one of these, see, look, I can this and I can that, and, you know, so I said, we'll see in the morning. And when morning came, she, the kid just wasn't going to have it. She was, she was going to play, and uh, it, it's just remarkable. I, would, I mean, it's, it's unthinkable that somebody would have a dislocation like that and be able to brace it and come out and play for the next two days like she did. And so, but the fact that she did is super encouraging. And uh, given the, the week to 10 days or so that we'll have here, I think that uh, she'll be ready to go.